Hello, my name is Robert Lindemann, and I will be talking here about the Apple Accessibility Inspector and more specifically the Run Audit feature. It's just a simple one button press where you can see some accessibility problems with your app, um, whether iOS or macOS, and um, I'll show you here how to use it. So uh, we can just start with um, opening Xcode. Um, and within here, uh, within Xcode, you can open developer tool and then get at the accessibility inspector. Um, we can um, just kind of look at it in general. Um, first of all, you set the target. Um, you could actually set it to any of the apps. Um, it doesn't have to be yours um, in macOS. And then you can also set it to the simulator or to an actual device. Um, it has many features. Um, this is a feature that kind of you can see all of the accessibility labels and you can see the accessibility hierarchy. We are not going to deal with this. It's a great way to um, suss out some voiceover features. We're going to run this fantastic run audit button. Um, it has some options. Um, I've been able to find most of these. Um, it doesn't seem to work on clipped text very well or text that, that um, kind of clips. But what's really fantastic about voiceover is if you run into ellipses, so you know, let's say you, 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 you tack on some, some text that um, you know, has leading and trailing and then it ends up being kind of an ellipsis uh, on it, voiceover will still read the whole thing. Um, I have just this starting, um, I have this, this starting app and um, you can see that um, it's just a real simple uh, table view app. And I'm just going to run this right in this first page. Um, this is a standard section header. Um, so it's funny that this contrast nearly passed. Uh, I would say that this is not, um, is not a huge issue. Um, but we can actually find what are actual standards in the WCAG guidelines. Um, so WCAG basically says, that if it's a normal bit of text or a label that the contrast should be four and a half to one and that if it's a label it should be three to one and actually we're gonna we're gonna look at some other features here right quick um, you can see where it ends up being it also bump out screenshot this is helpful if you're using um, an actual device and then also it'll highlight if you're using a simulator and um, we can uh, go into the fixed suggestion and it says, you know, what, what to do. And then we can go to the funniest app that I think Apple has ever released. And I'm sure if some like legit Apple designer sees this contract calculator that they will have an aneurysm. Um, it's just a really simple thing um, where you can add in, you know, whatever your colors are, and then you can check the contrast. Um, there's also ways to do this in code. You can, you know, you know, convert to the luminance. Um, there's there's uh, some ways to do this, uh, but this is just an easy way where you can just pop in those things and see, hey, does this pass um, for the contrast? And for the WCAG um, guidelines, actually, there's there's a rubric. Um, so this WCAG 1.4.3, it based on contrast, and that's where I got that number four and a half to one or three to one for headers. Um, we'll go on to uh, the next um, the next part here um which is uh the image issues and we'll run audit on here um and it has two different things um one is this image this text is in the image and also it's is wrong it's not it is it's it's oh man uh uh and i just noticed that um so this particular button um this is actually a, a little button with an image on it and when you do that the image will want you know you want to have like an accessibility hint on it and you actually might want to have some accessibility traits on a button because there's some specific ones um, whether you're playing or, or doing different you should check out the different accessibility traits they're, they're quite great and they add a lot of um, kind of uh, syntactical sugar to accessibility but this particular one um, it literally the file name is dogs and um, it will say dogs yeah, uh, on voiceover. Um, the first image, um, unfortunately, um, it won't read out at all. Um, there's no, it'll just pass over the image. And you know what, sometimes you, you do want to set is accessibility element to false because it's an ornamental image or it's an image that 
you know, that particular um, functionality is found somewhere else. But um, with really great inclusive design, you want to try and have it read out naturally and you want to have to really be able to, to do all of the features um, that a normal person would. And actually, if you're using things like the accessibility rotors, you actually might be able to do things faster than normal users um, with filtering and things. Um, so this one, yeah, it would just, it'll just read out, it's literally dogs, um, and it'll just say dogs button. It'll say dogs button. Um, and then this, this first one uses the vision API, um, obviously, and that this is, you know, potentially inaccessible text, which is kind of a great call out, um, if you're just looking at these things. Um, so we're going to pop over to the text issues, um, section, um, and I'll just run the audit again. You can see how just easy it is to just run the audit and um, uh, really just know some of these issues. Um, like I said, I, I found a few of them, or I, I found eight of them. Um, I actually found more than that, but I couldn't really make some quick code um, work for this. But this particular one, you know, contrast failed. I mean, that it is hard to read and in specific light, you know, um, light uh situations it might be very difficult to read um and uh these next couple dynamic text fonts are not supported and i will show you this really fantastic feature as a part of this accessibility inspector is that you can change the dynamic text and this is just such a cool thing um you know you can set this if you like run um you know your your tests you can ui tests you can actually go into the settings and just set the text and set it back or whatever um, so it's possible, um, but this is just a fun way to do that and see that really quickly. Um, this particular one, I think that I literally set it not to be. Um, yeah, adjust font for content size category is set to false, which don't do that unless your design is totally going to break everything. You really want to have your design flow. You want to be able to see everything in a slightly larger font. You would be incredibly surprised that you know, so many users have their their font set higher than normal. Um, and people don't go all the way, I'm sure, because, you know, there's ellipses everywhere. Um, but definitely, it, people have higher font sizes, and it's something that we need to, you know, test for and know. And this it's easy to know in this tool. Um, and then we have this other, this other one, um, which brings me to another feature of it's a, not a preferred font. And so this UI font has a preferred font and it has font styles. There's, there's ways to override these styles. It's, it's really cool. Um, and you know, you could provide a preferred font, um, and have it look really great. But if you just grab a UI font, I, I tried finding, uh, they don't have comic sans in the, the normal library. So I grabbed this marker felt thin. Um, uh, but this also shows that I actually set this to false. So, um, I, I, it's just better to use a preferred font. Um, and then we're going to grab the, the third one here. Let, let's pop back to um, the WCAG guidelines for these. Uh, so basically, um, for this image issues, uh, this label and name is probably what this uh, image name used in description. And then this uh, WCAG 111 is non-text content. Uh, WCAG specifically is for web, but a lot of these are, are really worthwhile and they're working on a mobile spec and we'll, we'll see how that goes um, into the future. So um, then on these text issues here, it showed this contrast um, and you can look these up. That was WCAG um, 1.4.3 for the contrast. And then when the, font, when the size does not uh, change, um, there, it also falls under this guideline, the WCAG 1.4.4. Uh, there's a lot of really great stuff in WCAG, and there's um, a number of great guides. So we'll go to my last panel here, um, and these are just some buttons. And this is a, a thorn in my side, is, is hit areas are too small. This is, it's, it's just the most hilarious thing that this is literally an, uh, like an iOS... Um, control uh, this this uh, little switch um, and it says you know it's not 44 by 44 and this is like really you really need to have all of your your touch targets be 44 by 44 and you know that includes the the back buttons and um, you know other other buttons that you have in your app it's it's really important um, just to be able to touch something or uh, uh, to be able to like actually touch on top of something so these next couple are um, 
really simple ones. This element has no description. This is a button and it's literally just a yellow rounded rect button that has no other accessibility information. So it's worthwhile to set an accessibility hint for a button or um, accessibility label for, for other elements. Um, and there's a, lo a lot of cool accessibility features in iOS. Um, you can use rotors where you could actually use like a list of things faster with accessibility than um, just normally. It'll filter content. And there's a lot of really cool things um, like grouping elements. So if you're in a form, you can group elements so it shows in the label so it doesn't read out every single one. Um, this next one is uh, label duplicates traits. And this one is the accessibility hint is literally set to redundant button. So it will read out redundant button button. Um, and then the dynamic text is not supported in this particular one. Um, and then it's not supported in a button because the text is kind of locked up in there. What's what's really funny about this tool, it doesn't catch some things like the segmented control is too short, UI text field is too short, um, and uh, a lot of those you you need to change the font yourself. Um, and there's ways to, to watch that with the UI appearance. And um, that's kind of the different things that uh, I can show you here. Um, the hit area too small is also a WCAG thing. You can also find this in the HIG. Um, the human interface guidelines um, and there are other rules in the WCAG like the non-text content um, no description and um, other things it's it's a really great uh, resource but um, obviously Apple is trying to find some really kind of uh, egregious errors in this just simple run audit button so I hope that just this simple button and uh, this quick guide is able to get you running and making um, more accessible apps and um, get you thinking about uh, better inclusive design. Thank you.